Hello everyone, we are back. I'm adding Christian and Mark to the stage. Hello. So we are now going to hear the next presentation, which is the state of GOEXT, along with an outlook on its future uh, by Mark Jensen and Christian Meyer. Uh, Mark is a developer for Open Layers and GOEXT, a conceptual architect for React Geo, GeoStyler, and more speaker and conductor of workshops. He's also an OEGO char charter member and a general general manager of ter ter Terrestris and Mundialis. Christian is uh, an engineer for geoinformatics and surveying. Uh, he's an open source geospatial enthusiast, founder and CEO of uh, Maxium, Maximum. Sorry. Uh, he's also an OEGO charter member and working on uh, GeoEXT, WEG, uh, GeoStyler and open layers. So thank you guys for joining. I'm going to start the video in a while and uh, we are going to come back for, for questions after the video. Enjoy. So hello and everyone, welcome to our presentation, the state of GEXT along with an outlook on its future. So let, let, the, let, brief, let us briefly introduce ourselves. My name is Chris. I'm the CEO and founder of Maximum in Germany. And here with me via remote connection is Mark from Terrestris. Hi, Mark. Hi, Chris. Thanks for introducing me. Uh, so I'm also from Germany, the general manager of the two companies, Terrestris and Mondialis. And I think, Chris, you want to maybe say something about Seth? Yeah, and also uh, Seth Gerbin uh, helped us to prepare this slide. He's geospatial developer uh, with Compass Informatics in Ireland. So, and uh, we are all working together on the GeoXT project. We are core developers and members of the project steering committee of the GeoXT project. And we uh, share the love uh, for uh, geo and open source software uh, in general. And uh, fun fact, we only met in person, all three of us, uh, for one time. And therefore, we are working uh, together very successfully, uh, let's say, for uh, the last couple of years. And if you might have noticed, our abbreviated names are all 10 characters long. Also, fun fact for the nerds uh, under us. Yes, back to the talk, to the topic. Um, this talk will introduce you to the GEXT project and we'll have a little focus on the recent changes of the last two years since the last phosphor g has taken place and we will try to give an outlook what will come in the project and it's merely intended for people without too much previous know-how of the GXT project so if you are an expert you might listen uh, but you might have that uh, news uh, than the other guys so maybe Oh, so yeah, sorry, we have to synchronize a bit with the, with the scrolling of the slides, but don't worry. So we do not, we do not uh, cancel the recording now. And yeah, so what you might have know is uh, what is GXT? GXT is an open source uh, project which enables the uh, building desktop like GIS application through the web. And it combines the GIS functionality of open layers with the user interface savvy of the EXT JavaScript library provided by Sencha. So the two base libraries, uh, open layers, the first one is a high performance feature pack library for all your mapping needs. And it's often called the Swiss Army knife for JavaScript mapping. It's an OS Geo project under BSD license, and it supports many data types, layer types, has custom controls and interaction, all you need to build your fancy slippy, slippy maps. XTJS is a JavaScript framework, one of the most comprehens uh, comprehensive frameworks for building data intensive cross platform web and mobile application. And one of the biggest advantages is that it includes a UI bundle which has 115 or 120 um, UI components to build feature rich web applications, for example, grids, charts, layouts, and all that stuff. So GeoXT itself has some kind of dual licensing. Um, we have this GPL version, which is hosted on GitHub. 
And then if you buy a commercial license of a license of EXT JS, you can use GeoEXT uh, under the BSD license so that GeoXT won't inject your commercial project. So for if you have any questions about that, uh, we have an FAQ page and also Sanchar as the as the host or the maintainer of the EXT library uh, has also an FAQ page, which uh, have really interesting information about that. And this is how GUXT could look like in general. So what you see on the right side, we have an open layers map, which uh, yeah, slightly integrates uh, into, a, into a basic layout. And on the left side, we have an EXTJS script, which uh, combines the features you see on the map um, also listing the, the attributes of the listed features and you can do some pagination and filtering and all that stuff. So as said, it combines the savvy of EXTJS and the mapping needs of uh, open layers. And here for completeness, there were several other reports on, uh, uh, on, on previous falls for GE conferences, which are here as a kind of a, a link, a link list uh, where you can where you can look up uh, later on if you if you see that slides after the conference. So some project news. What what happened in the last two years? So we are now a Noah's Geo community project. So since fall of 2019, under the lead of Seth Gervin, um, we were granted as an Noah's Geo community project, which was a huge huge step to getting this acceptance and this badge. EXTJS news, or let's say some sort of. So Sencha was acquired by IDERA in 2017, which isn't really a hot news anymore, but somehow brought some, uh, some yeah, unsureness uh, what happens to the project. And we can say, OK, in the meantime, there was a release of a new major version of EXTJS. It's version 7. The current uh, last commercial version is 7.4, the same than the community edition and the last release GPL version is uh, version seven. And there are some sites where you can pick up the latest versions, which is not always that easy. And there are no concrete uh, plans for version eight, which was uh, released in um, yeah, the roadmap update of Sencha, but we are sure that things uh, are happening under the hood in the meantime. Open layers news, there is always happening a continuous development on a really, really high quality level. So open layers is getting better and better uh, due to its community members. So the current version is uh, 661. And there's also a talk on this Phosphor-G conference, uh, Open Layers Feature Frenzy by Andreas Hotcheva and Tim Schaub. So the current version is version 4.0.0 of GUXT which was a major step. And then at the last Force 4 g in 2019, we were stuck at version 2.3. So version four, so the biggest change is the integration of open layers in version six, which uh, lasted very long and was the reason to, to get in semantic versioning for GeoXT as well. So there are no breaking changes of GeoXT between three and four. But since it was such a huge step from open layers four to open layer six, um, yeah, we we agreed to to name it version four, and therefore we had to get rid of the of the three in the project name. So it's now uh, we renamed the the repository from GeoXT three to uh, GeoXT, and just a little hint: it's no good idea to put a version name in your project name. <laughs> I can tell you that now. So there are any changes regarding uh, to, to open layers, uh, be sure to, to get a hit on the release notes, which are linked here. So the new features, there is, a, there is some kind of uh, feature selection model has been introduced in version four, which allows to automatically synchronize uh, a grid row selection with a selection on the map and vice versa. Uh, printing stuff with, with Mapfish was improved, so we can now print labels with offset. And we can now restrict uh, the vector features for printing uh, to the map extent. Also, what was introduced in the last years was is a huge support for WFS, and this was uh, continuously improved. So we now support remote uh, remote sorting, and we hardened it, and we have fewer implementation specifics and uh, better vendor independence for WFS support. 
Also, we had a focus on OGC filtering. We now support spatial filters and we made the existing non-spatial filters more robust. For example, we have now a very stable combination methods for the filters. And even what you always don't see and kind of present very well is the work we, we did under the hood. So we had a lot of bug fixes and hardening. We introduced more config options. Um, we moved the continuous integration from Travis to GitHub Actions, and we uh, improved the test coverage. So, Mark, it's you thank now. You. Yes, thank you, Chris, for giving us a rush through uh, what GUXT is and how it's created and what are the base libraries. So. Uh, the next part we want to look at in this presentation is the ecosystem around uh, GUXT uh, because it's important to not only have a look at GUXT to build your applications, but probably there's something that you can pick from these talks um, around the ecosystem of GUXT. Okay, so in case you want to work with GUXT, uh, you use NPM to install it. That's the recommendation of the developer team. Um, this has changed. So GUXT is quite an old project now. I don't remember when the first version was out, but it's it's a bit uh, older now. And we tried to, of course, use the uh, yeah modern ways or adopt to the modern ways of of installing um, or, or resolving dependencies. Um, this is not actually new. Uh, so we also were able to uh, do this in 2019 when Seth gave the last presentation on GUXT. Um, but I still see some customers using GUXT in a non-optimal way. So if you are one of those, please try to use it like this, npm install GUXT at GUXT slash GUXT. So if you want to have a look at GUXT, how do you do that? Uh, well, the easiest thing to do is to have a look at the homepage, of course, but if in case you already have access to the OSGEO Live, uh, which is basically a project where many OSGEO projects are bundled together in one self-running system, uh, there's also uh, GUXT on it. Uh, it has a project overview where you can learn basically the same things that we taught you here or teach you here. Um, but there's also a nice quick quick start, something of a tutorial. And uh, when you do that, you'll create basically a demo application, which looks like this. And then you can also see um, the thing that Chris mentioned with less vendor specifics in bought in or baked into GUXT, because this one is fed by map server backend. And previously, due to historic reasons, many of the things inside of GUXT were based on, um, well, obviously the standard, but sometimes uh, it had a flavor of the geo server vendor specifics that sometimes yeah, uh, run into your project. So um, this one is based on map server and it shows quite a lot. Uh, I think in two hours or something, you can complete this tutorial. It's on the OS Geo Live. So something else uh, that belongs to the ecosystem are other libraries around GUXT itself. So there's one, one library that's called Basics. It's a bit uh, more higher level library than GUXT. It has a focus on user interface com um, components. Uh, so if, for example, nice forms to add WMSs and digitizing tools and stuff like that. Um, it's on GitHub and you can have a look at the API docs or the code. Okay, so now there's another library that we, well, when we, Chris and me, or says when we create projects on with GUXT, we sometimes, um, or we oftentimes, we use GeoStyler when it comes to styling geodata. And that's a question that we get asked often, a task that we have to solve often. So GeoStyler is uh, here an example of one great JavaScript library, which doesn't have any ext.js library dependencies, but it can be integrated greatly uh, even in GeoXT or GeoXT based libraries. So once you decide to go with GeoXT, you're not bound to it. But with modern JavaScript user interface libraries like GeoStyler and many others, it's easy to combine them and profit from all of those aspects. There's a couple of links here. Make sure to watch the talk by Jan. Uh, I think it's later today, but better check your schedule uh, because I don't have it in my mind. Uh, so this is how it can look like. This is a window coming from ext.js and um, inside that window there are, uh, yeah, as you can see, points being styled uh, with different scales and several filters and so on and so forth. This is GeoStyler inside of this GeoXT component. Mm -hmm. Okay, so even more um, abstract is 
this Compass Informatics Map View project, which is on GitHub. Uh, there's a nice link down here, and you can have a look at the sources also. Um, this can be used as a starting point or a, a blueprint for new applications that combine all these GeoXT basics and GeoStyler. Uh, it has also nice digitizing tools and cool layer tree plugins, for example, but it can also be used uh, in itself as a sort of a library, so you can extend that further. We will see examples later in this talk how this can then be used and configured furthermore. So this is how this thing looks. So this is the CPSI demo system, so it's a bit of generic. So some of these tools here are coming from open layers, some are from basics, some are from GeoXT. So this brings it all together. Probably a good resource if you want to learn how to put all the information together into one running application. So that was it for the ecosystem around GeoXT and how is these um, or are these libraries being used in production applications? We have picked a couple of, of production systems that we uh, have helped to create and that are now in different stages, uh, stages of, of development. Uh, so at first, uh, a project that Compass has created, uh, it's the public lighting system. It's there to you know, manage over 300,000 public lights in Ireland. And uh, the number one priority for this system was that it has a great and very reliable and stable and robust uh, database and a nice mapping. And uh, yeah, this all stability was the top one thing. And this one uses GeoXT version four and EXCJS version six. So the newest versions of, of those uh, libraries basically. Um, this is how it looks like. You see there are some streetlights here that are being managed, uh, grid, uh, Google Maps integration, and so on and so forth. Doesn't look so different from the CPSI MapView project that we had a look on earlier. So the same thing uh, is basically used, uh, and, well, for this other topic here where it's coming, um, where it's used to manage local and regional roads. And this is a long time user of GeoXT. The first version uses the very first version of GeoXT and it has been updated continuously by SES and others. Um, yeah, now uses also the newest version. This is how this one looks. Yeah, you can see it's very, well, it's, it's a bit table, well, let's say forum based. It's uh, an internal application used, not so much user centric. So what this last application makes heavy use of is the WFS um, store um that got some great um additions and new features so we have two-way binding basically uh, so when you filter the grid the layer gets filtered as well um you can page we have all seen or parts of it we have already seen it makes heavy use of this and nice feature also the export of these grids to shape file or excel so the next uh, production application is the BFS Geoportal. Uh, BFS is the German abbreviation for Federal Office for Radiation Protection. And um, well, the BFS uses it to publish its open data. Um, it's a nice application where also a lot of different applications on, uh, sorry, libraries are being included and combined. So the charting, for example, is done with D3.js and so on and so forth. So you see this one looks a little bit different. Um, but the trained eye can see it's made with GeoXT. Uh, the last production uh, example I want to show is the Malava Disaster Management Portal, created mainly by Jakob Mix, one of the um, one of the colleagues of Chris from Maximum, and he gave a nice presentation in German uh, at the German chapter conference Foskis. Uh, there's also links uh, to the sources and the running instance here. And if you open these links, this is how it looks like. You see there's a nice cartographic touch to it, but also there's some other uh, combination, well, some other components from GeoXT that you might recognize, like the buttons and, and so on and so forth. So that's it to, for, these, um, for these production settings. We come now to the last part of the presentation, which is the outlook. How will GeoXT continue to work in, in the future? So what do we plan? So we plan or we have non-concrete plans of upgrading to EXTJS version 7, the GVL variant of that library. And we also want to, um, well, follow the path of open layers. So when open layers gets new releases, we want to follow them and try to be as recent as possible. Um, so the base libraries, when they change, we want to, you know, like follow. Uh, we want to use probably an own packaging tool so that we don't know new we do no longer depend on the central command uh, tool, which is great, but it does, it's not as cool as the newer to dependency or, 
or other building mechanisms uh, in the JavaScript world. Of course, there's going to be a lot of bug fixing and maintenance. So for all these things to happen, um, we would very warmly welcome uh, any funding. And um, so I think I added the beer, Chris added the wine, uh, and the whiskey is, of course, from the Irish guy. So in case you want to fund anything of that, just contact us. There's links in this presentation. We, we would be happy to do it, but we cannot do it, you know, like on our own. So the takeaway message. So GeoEXT, this community project uh, of the OS Geo community, uh, is alive and well. Uh, you can use it to create awesome application. And if you want to have desktop like GIS applications, um, you can. It's a it's a good good uh, choice probably. So you can try it easily on OS Geo Live, for example. And once you have done that, we uh, invite you to get more involved in the code and in the project. You can, you know, like subscribe to the mailing list. Please fork our repo, test it, file bugs, fix our currently broken examples. Some of them are broken right now, but uh, either Chris and me will fix it or you will probably do it. And with that said, please help us make the next version of GVXT, um, yeah, become the GVXT version you want to have. And uh, thank you for your... Um, yeah, thanks for everything, <laughs> dear listener of this uh, virtual talk. And uh, we hope you have any questions, uh, Chris and me, or at least one of us will be in the session now and uh, are happy to take your answers. Please contact us, either me, Seth, or Christian. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, we are back and uh, thank you for for the presentation um we have uh oh i think there's some delay sorry about that so we we have uh, basically one question on on the chat and i'm going to put it here so what, what is the strategy of the project with uh, the broad adoption of modern JavaScript frameworks like React, Angular, and others? Chris, do you want to go first or shall I start? Feel free. I'll, I'll interrupt you as so always. First, yeah. Thank you for this question and for, um, for posing it. So it's a bit expected when you uh, create a talk about something that's based on of of XJS that um, someone asks about React or Angular or Vue.js or whatever. So um, there's a couple of ideas that came to our mind while we were discussing this uh, in the background, even while we saw that this this um, question was being asked. So there's uh, EXTJS has some, let's call them integrations with, I think it's AngularJS and React. Um, that is something that we will keep an eye on and to see where this leads. So this makes it easier to interact or integrate with uh, applications written with those awesome JavaScript libraries. Um, but we are not too confident right now, but it might change uh, that this is the answer to all, you know, like future directions. Um, a second point that I wanted to add is that, um, so we saw in the presentation uh, that it's, it's doable to combine this, um, to combine your GeoXT applications or ones that are built on basics or whatever uh, with more modern um, applications or, or libraries. That's totally doable and might also be a good idea. So to focus more. And the third and last point from my side, and then Chris can, you know, like uh, contradict everything that I said and say, switch to everything uh, new uh, as soon as it comes uh, is the last point is, we get a surprising amount of, um, well, both Chris and his uh, company and, and me and my company, a surprising amount of uh, requests with regard to GXT. So GXT is used in in, uh, in environments which don't change that often. And um, that's right now we can still make a good uh, applications with it that do the job and do it well. And once you get the, the hook of it, it's also quite nice to work with EXTJS, even though it has some downsides. I'm not a fanboy or anything, but I'm, I'm choosing tools which, you know, like work right now and try to work or will work for a time being. Chris, please. Yes, yeah, so, 
Okay. Yeah, so so having those as wrapper components which integrate uh, the, the EXT component library to, to React or Angular is not a real good idea from my just from my point of view. So uh, um, if you want if we want to use React or Angular or Future as some of the modern hip guys in the JavaScript world, just use them and use them with their ecosystem. And if you have the needs for a, let's say, specialized technical desktop-like application, maybe EXTJS is, is your tool of choice. And then use it with its own component library. But if you're into, into, into React or Vue or any other thing, just, just use those and do not try to, to mix it uh, because uh, you want to stick on the cool guy and have the, li the UI library of the other thing, which do not match in your patterns and stuff like that. So I'd say uh, to choose one and and, and use it uh, for good for good reasons. Um, that's the strategy I would follow. And 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 knowing that the JavaScript world is quite fast, it might have been that that let's say Vue or Angular is gone in a couple of years, and the next guy comes around. You have to do this integration work again because you you have to stick on this and then combine it with that. This is even the struggle we have with upgrading open layers and ext.js version to get uh, GUXT on track that they are in sync with the base libraries. And if I think of having React and all those other things within, uh, I, I couldn't sleep well, I think. Yeah, both all me right. and Chris not always use GUXT for all our things. We use what fits best. Yeah. So we have different different tools in our in our stack and in our portfolio. So uh, if you want to do something more modern, uh, we have solutions for React and uh, or Vue.js, for example, and then we choose those. Thank you for for the answer. We have one more question from the chat. Uh, how would you compare DOX to other desktop like GIS applications out there? Well, that's a good question. I say that to all the questions, of course. You, you, you already uh, understood that. So, um, so which other desktop like uh, GIS applications do you think of? So, I think being desktop like isn't um, the trend right now. Like uh, for some, well, most, well, more disruptive, of course, is um, to look a little less like a desktop application that you used to to know. Um, so from the top of my head, which other uh, desktop-like GIS applications come to your mind, Chris? That was the thing I asked myself if I read the question on the other screen right here. So, so, that, so not sure, but it, as you said, uh, it's, I think it's easier to have it desktop-like. So even though you have some mobile-first stuff, uh, having this perfectly fit on the desktop is the more easier way than having it the other way around. So. Uh, so I'm not sure how to answer this question, to be honest. Yeah, I'd say you can create a very good desktop-like GIS application if you want to. But one thing that most people, well, we also didn't mention it too far. So you're not bound to that layout. So there's various options that you have to make your GXT app look a little less like a desktop in case you want that. But um, I think sometimes we in this tech bubble, uh, we forget that uh, a lot of people have a lot of uh, are used to a lot of desktop programs, and not all GIS applications are written for the you know like JavaScript and um, I don't know web natives around there, but also for some some other target group for for people that you know like work a lot with yeah standard this desktop tooling, and for them uh, it might make sense to create an application that looks familiar to the things that they know that they know of. So if you put users first, it's probably also sometimes a good idea to have this, I wouldn't even say uh, unpolished or old or, or outdated look, but you know, it's it can be made, you know, like desktop-like and also nice and, and appealing. So I hope this answers the question. If not, please ask another one. Thank you. Uh, there's another one, but we don't have enough time. We are one minute before, <laughs> so. Maybe uh, this can be we, answered on, on the chat. Yeah, we, we will answer something on the chat. Thank you very much again for your presentation. You're welcome. Thank you for hosting us. Yeah, thank you, thank you for your work. And nice to have us here.